to be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to it as a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep. To sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. So who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely. The pangs of despised love. The law's delay. The insolence of office. And the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might as quiet as make with a bare bodkin. How would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life but that the dread of something after death, that undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to Others we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickly though with the pale cast thought. And the enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard their currents turn awry. and lose the time of action.